Welcome to the controversial world of motor neuron disease and exercise research. My name is Emily, I have motor neuron disease, and I'm making this channel to highlight some portions of the multifaceted neuro rehab system that I've developed to help my doctors and therapists, and also the medical research I have access to due to my job working in a lab. No, I'm not a doctor, I'm just here to show you what works for me, and hopefully inform other researchers of stuff to look for. I've already made one video on how I use electrical stimulation and this next the next few videos I'm going to make are going to be about my exercise routine so I wanted to create this video to show you guys some of the logic behind the different exercises I use. So welcome, hope you enjoy, and yeah let's go. So exercise is controversial in motor neuron disease because Yes, there's been studies showing it to be helpful, however, due to the large amount of exercise options, it's hard to nail down exactly what specific type of exercise is going to be most advantageous for motor neuron disease patients. I forgot to add that research requires funding, and funding is hard to come by when you are researching medical interventions that have low market value, such as exercise. Because compared to pharmaceutical options where you can be charged an arm and a leg for the rest of your life, exercise, you really just buy the equipment and you go. Sure, there's physical therapy, but that doesn't last forever. And once you learn how to do it on your own, you're off to the races. Also, the majority of the research, I think actually all of the research I'll be showing you guys today is for ALS. And that is because it is the most common type of motor neuron disease but also is the most researched thanks to the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. But no hate to that, I'll take it, I'll take what we can get, and so I hope y'all enjoy the rest of the video. So now that I've gone over some of the limitations of exercise research, I'm gonna delve into what the studies that are available have shown. So first of all, I'm gonna start off with animal research. So in transgenic mice models, there's been research findings indicating that exercise can be neuroprotective. I'll put a few paper titles on the screen now, so if you want to look into it more and you're interested. And so going off of that, there's also been studies done in humans. Um, there's been a few randomized control trials, which are considered the gold standard because you have a control group and then an experimental group, and they're randomly assigned, so you can't really... There's, it, decreases the chance of bias. But in these randomized control trials, some have shown that long-term moderate exercise can improve function in ALS patients, which can lead to increased independence and just quality of life in general. One meta-analysis of seven studies I want to point to was done in 2020. And that study found, like as I just said, that long-term which is greater than 10 months of moderate exercise, can improve function in ALS patients. They also found that exercise can improve um, pulmonary function when you do um, resistance pulmonary exercises. The other thing that this uh, meta-analysis found was that there were no indications that exercise made the patient's condition worse. One of the studies they included measured the creatine kinase levels before and after exercise, which creatine kinase is a good indicator of muscle damage. And so it showed that the exercise did not damage the muscles of the ALS patients. The pulmonary exercise is what I believe to be one of the most exciting findings because pulmonary function and pneumonia and diseases like that are the leading cause of death in motor neuron diseases. And so if we're able to find something that can help patients improve their respiratory function while we're waiting for this cure, it might actually help people stay alive longer. And so I'll be linking in the description below a video of a researcher named Emily Plowman who actually conducted one of the clinical trials on respiratory exercises. There have been studies showing that strenuous exercise can be bad for people who have the genetic type of ALS. Um, still in the early days of looking into, but it's just something I want to note. In general, I found there's an underappreciation for neuroplasticity in ALS research and really just giving patients 
the ability to go out and try new things. So yes, there are so many different types of exercise and it's hard to pin down which exact type is the best type. But um, I've been able to go out and experiment with things. I've tried a bunch of different types of exercise. I've put myself in a CrossFit gym, weightlifting, cardio. I've tried many things, water therapy and... I'm going to present to you guys the exercises that I find to help me the most. They probably won't work for everyone because everyone's unique and everyone has their own disease path or condition. The videos that will come after this introductory video are going to highlight my respiratory exercises, hand exercises, and then my whole body basically exercise system where it's just a daily moderate exercise. And I've just found this to be very helpful. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. And yeah, hope y'all are having a good one. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube-y things if you liked what you saw here. And yeah, bye.